This week on This Is America and the World, a terrific group of former U.S. ambassadors talk about the U.S. image abroad. The ambassadors have served in Denmark, Saudi Arabia, Costa Rica, and South Africa, and bring a wide range of experience, wisdom, and insight to the table. Four ambassadors here, get me out of the way as quickly as possible and engage each other in conversation. It's kind of interesting that uh, in the United States, it's the only a country I hear where you get to keep your ambassador title after you've left the country you've been posted in. True? It could be a myth. It could be a myth. It could be a myth. But we call you we call you Madam Ambassador, right? True. Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, Madam Ambassador. I think other countries may do it as well. Oh, they do. Yeah. I have met a number of former ambassadors from other countries who continue to use the title. Ah, oh. let me ask you this question. Get everybody involved. As I say, get me out of the way. When you look at the world today, what do you see, Ambassador Andrew? What do you see? The world. When I look at the world, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to be posted down in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. and I hadn't really focused on the role Latin America plays. So being in Costa Rica, when I look at the world, you know, I see that Latin America plays a much larger role for the United States as a trading partner, uh, as a partner that can work with us on climate change. So it really changed my thinking about the role that Latin America can play for America and uh, with America. Ah, uh, thank you for your service there. Uh, Ambassador Gibbs, uh, how about uh, South Africa? You were posted there. What, what, what did you make of the United States as you saw it changing right before your very eyes? It, it's a fascinating question. You know, South Africa and the United States have had a very interesting history. Because of sort of Cold War ideology, we were on the wrong side of apartheid as a government. Mm -hmm. And the American people stood up and said, change, but South Africans have a long memory and they remember our government being on the wrong side. Uh -huh. And so to this day, we're still trying to make sure that we get that relationship right and deal with that hangover and legacy. Mm. So it's a very interesting role for the United States. We're a major trading partner, we're growing, but in terms of historical alliances, they're actually stronger with some people like Cuba and Russia yeah, yeah. than they are with us. Uh, have we missed the boat in Africa? Just the entire area and you nodded your head and <laughs> we're, said yes. We're in the first inning of a nine inning game. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So Africa, you know, if you read the press about Africa rising, et mm -hmm. cetera, um, the U.S. isn't there at the level it needs to be. President Obama is hosting the first ever summit of African heads of state here in Washington in August. Mm -hmm. It'll be the first time that all the African heads of state have been invited to Washington. They've been invited to China previously, France, Japan. Mm -hmm. So we're playing a little bit of catch up. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. On the other hand, yeah, yeah. Africa needs all of us there. Uh, Ambassador uh, Fraker, uh, Saudi Arabia, posting in Saudi Arabia, and you've been in and out of the Middle East for 30, 40 years? 40 years, yes. When you see what is going on in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, at Israel, Palestine, what do you make of it all? So turmoil. I mean, the region is, is noted for its uh, complexity mm -hmm. and, and, and many, many very uh, complicated issues. Mm -hmm. And we see this playing out uh, dramatically in places like Syria and Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan and, and uh, Egypt, North Africa. Saudi Arabia, uh, relatively speaking, is a sea of tranquility in the midst of all this. Mm -hmm. But the vision from Riyadh looking out yeah. in the neighborhood uh -huh. is of Ooh. turmoil yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and greatly concerning. The Secretary of State, as you know, is out there, uh, was uh, in Iraq yesterday. Uh, we'll be meeting in Saudi Arabia and elsewhere. And, and you know, the pivot to Asia, mm -hmm. uh, that sounds good. But yeah. the reality is that, you know, the work that needs to be done on the ground needs to be done in the Middle East, and, and this is going to be intense for quite uh, a Are we going to lose uh, Iraq altogether? Uh, is it going to split into three countries? What's your best judgment? You know, it's uh, it very possible, very mm -hmm. possible. I think Kurdistan is already yep. well on the way of, yep. of achieving that, uh, mm -hmm. and that's not much of a surprise to anybody. Back in, uh, in 2003, when, uh, when we invaded uh, Iraq, uh, uh, many of us looked at at that picture and said, you know, 
there really is no justification for, for a central government in Iraq mm. unless they can control the military and the oil. Mm -hmm. Because if they can't do those things, mm -hmm. then the, uh, the ethnic makeup of the country suggests a, the division into three parts. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. that's, what, that's what we're seeing. And we're seeing a very weak central government now. You know, the army's in flight. Uh, this is, it sh should be concerning to all of us. Mm. Uh, Ambassador Fulton, uh, you were posted in Denmark, so you're looking at us from a European point of view. How, do, how did you see America when you were posted abroad? How do you see America as uh, a, a, our image abroad? Huh? And my compliments to you for choosing ambassadors who have station, been stationed in different parts of the world because our experience as ambassadors is going to be formed largely by what countries we're assigned to. Uh -huh. And so I was delighted to be ambassador to Denmark. It was a very busy time and I had the president visit twice in the first five months I was there. Mm -hmm. We forget there was a climate <laughs> conference in 2009, uh -huh. uh, except that Edward Snowden has reminded the Danes that there was a climate conference in 2009. Uh -huh. um, but I do see things from a European perspective. And the pivot to Asia, I think, was a little bit worrying to Europeans ah. because there was a concern that we were going to look across the other ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and forget our good friends and allies in Europe. That is not the case. That was never President Obama's intention to choose one over the other. Mm -hmm. But the, um, I think our, as you look to the world today and you look at all of the conflicts there are, I mean, there's a plethora of conflicts mm. that are really about local issues and local sectarian, you know, conflicts. If we are going to have an influence in any of those areas, we need to have an influence with our European partners. Mm -hmm. I think that's been very effective in economic sanctions in a number of ways in terms of Iran, economic sanctions against Russia for taking Crimea. But I think we also, we need to continue to work together and we need to understand the European point of view, the European view of the United States, and find those strengths and really make the best use of them we can in today's world. Mm. Uh, let me take a little break, uh, tell the folks at home we have gathered together, uh, as you uh, now know, uh, four uh, former U.S. ambassadors to uh, all parts of the globe. And uh, what we're trying to get at here in this uh, program is uh, is the U.S. image abroad? Is it changing? Are we doing the right work abroad? I'll take a little break back on the other side. This is America and the World. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and the F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. ANA, Japan's largest airline with an extensive network throughout Asia. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Republic of Kazakhstan, a rich history and a future of development and growth the Rotondaro Family Trust, the Embassy Series Uniting People Through Musical Diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings, and Ventana Productions Television Facilities Editing and Distribution Services. You mentioned Edward Snowden. <laughs> yes. Hero or villain? Your <laughs> ambassadors, he was reading your cables, huh? Well, that, you know, we had WikiLeaks while First we were ambassadors. Uh -huh. uh, that was difficult enough. I do believe, I've been back in Denmark a number of times, and they have told me, ordinary Danes, not the Danish government, that they think Edward Snowden has been the biggest negative effect on Danish-U.S. relations in a oh. long time. Uh, how so? How so? Um, in part because I think the Europeans... Um, take privacy a lot more seriously, and so the idea that the United States was spying on everybody, um, which is a view he promotes, he also wrote a special letter to the Danes, mm. which was published in a Danish newspaper. Um, I think with allegations that I don't know are necessarily substantiated, but talking about the climate conference and uh, the United States, you know, 
getting a lot of information in unofficial ways, shall uh, we say. So he stirred up he stirred up the pot, I think, in many ways. Mm -hmm. There was one former Danish minister who thought that the Danes should consider giving him asylum. I think fortunately for us, the political parties on the left and the right and the middle all said, no, that's a crazy idea. Uh -huh. But uh, I think that he's been, I think it's, he's made made it more difficult for the United States and Europe to feel comfortable. Uh, uh, just to yeah, go ahead, jump a in. little bit of a difference, which is one, I agree, I agree he's a villain, uh, <laughs> just to start to answer your question. Yep. But the Africans assumed we were spying on them all along. Uh -huh. And I think in some ways they were surprised that we weren't doing more. You know, almost what was revealed uh, was less exciting than what they expected to see. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think it, it gets to the different perspectives. And I think part of our challenge is going to be how do we engage with these emerging democracies around the world, whether mm -hmm. they be India, Brazil, mm -hmm. um, to strengthen, to go beyond just our European alliances and uh -huh. start to build a broader coalition that we can work with. How best to do, uh, go ahead. Well, uh, I was going to say, but I thought one and of the things that was interesting yes, about yeah, please. Uh, that the, was the, idea. <laughs> the conversation we're having is that <clears throat> in some ways I think the Snowden matter really opens up the question about information flow and modern technology. Because in the past, the way diplomats worked and embassies worked, I mean, the, the information was difficult to obtain. It was carefully analyzed, carefully um, uh, sent up the chains of uh, command uh, and further analyzed. And that's how it all worked. And it was, um, that's part of what our embassies did. I mean, in today's world with instant information, and frankly, I would say that, frankly, a flow of information that goes faster then we can analyze and add perspective ah. uh, that it really has changed the way, in a sense, we do mm. business as embassies uh, and uh, as governments yep. in government to government relationships. Mm. And I think, frankly, we're yet to really catch up to that. I mean, I think we need a chance to sit back and say, how do we make the technology work to our advantage to add the analysis and the perspective that's so important for our being able to act and react in a way that serves not just our short-term but our long-term interests. Are you talking about when you're posted abroad or the information that is flowing to Washington to be analyzed and such? Both. Both. Yeah, all the information. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so I, I, I'm not sure if hero or villain are the right, is the okay. right way to categorize it. I, right. I, I think the issues that, that he has exposed and raised are really important issues mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. the American people should be aware of mm -hmm. and should have a chance to comment on. And one of the things that, you know, having been involved in the Middle East so much, you know, counterterrorism uh, and, and the rest is, has been a big part of my portfolio, if you will. And what I've be become acutely aware of is how generally overly accepting the American population and public is about security issues. Mm -hmm. All you have to do in this town is say security and uh -huh. people sort of fall at your feet and allow you a lot of room that perhaps you shouldn't, with, with hindsight or retrospect, be allowed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I think Snowden was a, was a sort of shot uh, in the air over this whole issue. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I would uh, in, in encourage people to, to try and look at and understand more deeply what these, what these issues of, of individual freedom are, uh, communication, all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think you know, I would look at it from, from that perspective. Mm -hmm. For sure the Europeans, and I, I lived in Europe for over 20 years, the Europeans take their privacy a lot more uh, uh, seriously. So, uh, you know, these were, these were shocking revelations for, for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting to juxtapose that with the reaction here in the U.S., which was kind of a general acceptance. Well, they, of course, they, we, yeah. we know everybody spies yeah. on everybody yeah, yeah, else, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they read all of our emails, the NSC's up there doing all this. So. Why should we be concerned? Well, we should be concerned because these are really important issues. Mm. If you look at our constitution, et cetera, et cetera, these uh, are important. Ambassador wants you to do Ironically, you know, the Europeans are discovering, as perhaps they knew already, they do the same things. Uh, yeah. And in fact, the, the UK is Everybody's middle, spying on exactly, everybody else. It's just that it made it very embarrassing, I yeah. think. And, mm -hmm. and perhaps, perhaps there is something good that will come of it to take a look at um, how we do things. But I think it has created a, a 
you know, unfortunateness of ill will at a time when we really it need to be able to work together. It certainly made diplomacy more difficult. It did. And it diplomacy certainly has yeah. made diplomacy yeah. more difficult. WikiLeaks yes. first. WikiLeaks did that. WikiLeaks was and, so and WikiLeaks for me was important. My, one of my cables was one of the first ones. <laughs> oh. One of my meetings with John Brennan, who's now head of the CIA, uh -huh. and the King was one of the first WikiLeaks cable that came out. Oh, so Lord. I was keenly interested in how all that unfolded. And, what, and what, 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 let me just put this on the table. So uh, you made diplomacy uh, a lot harder. What's the mission of the State Department and what's the mission of an ambassador abroad? Is it all security, trade, economics, you know, that kind of a thing? Uh, or what's going on if, if you're posted abroad? What's your job? What's your mission? I, I used to dis <coughs> describe it, and I'll be curious to see what you all say, but you really have at least four different jobs. One, you're a, you're a manager. You have a, a bunch of people who are sitting underneath you. Had you had a lot of people, didn't We you? had 1,000 people, a $700 million budget. Um, so you're managing that operation, making sure that American taxpayers' dollars are well spent and that uh, your people are safe. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the manager role. There's a reporter role. You're reporting back to your country. Uh -huh. you're, you know, you're supposed to be an analyst, and to Anne's point, you have to get beneath what's in the press and add a layer of context and value for it to be worthwhile. So, mm -hmm. you know, I actually found the greatest skill was to be a listener um, and to really listen so that, one, you could explain to Washington how the host country was viewing your issues, but two, you could then craft a response that they could hear because you were hearing them first. Uh -huh then you're, there's the public diplomacy part of it where you're talking to the people of the country, not just uh -huh. the government uh -huh. and representing America's values abroad, helping industry, helping American citizens who are there. So it's a number of different roles all wrapped up into one. Mm. I think Don's right. I think the, you are the representative of the United States of America uh -huh. in your host country. And so I happen to be in Denmark, which also has a monarchy, mm -hmm. and because we don't have any history with monarchies, sometimes it's a little confusing to the United States government, that there's a difference between the head of state mm -hmm. and the head of government. So part of what we have to do, as Don says, is be the eyes and ears on the ground for our government. Part of it is advising back to Washington mm -hmm. on anything from protocol to culture to much more important political issues. And, and uh, But it's also, I thought, even in Europe, where they are close friends, and Denmark, where, you know, many of the Danes have personal relationships with Americans. Mm -hmm. They have a relative who mm -hmm. immigrated to the United States. One of the most important things we do, I believe, is represent the United States to the people of our country. Ah. And the, so we're officially working with the government channels a lot, but we also have to engage in public diplomacy. Mm -hmm. The Danes are among our most stalwart allies. Oh, that's nice to know. And we need them to be our stalwart allies in 20 years. So mm -hmm. Why do you say that, we need them? I don't see the world getting a lot less complicated in the days ahead. We need all the friends we can get. Oh. <laughs> That's right. I think we need particularly, you know, countries who have uh, governments who are set up around individual freedoms and constitutional uh, governments with limited powers. I think we need to be able to work together to demonstrate that we're good yeah. actors. When you say uh, when you say we need all the friends we can get, that is a very provocative statement. Does that suggest that our image abroad has slowly faded? So I think and I'd be curious to see what my panelists think. People in Africa at least, well speak to the region I know, want to believe in the America mm -hmm. that our values describe. Uh -huh. I think they quite often feel we fall short. I think one of the biggest challenges I had as ambassador uh -huh. was explaining that democracies really is the way to go when they look at how Congress is gridlocked mm -hmm. and not solving our problems. So I think they believe in the vision, they love what America stands for, they worry we're not executing against that potential and you know, I think we have a ways to go. And, 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 well, let me, and I was going to say, just to add to that, mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's a difference between having people like us uh -huh. and having them support us. We would do um, surveys in Costa Rica and large, you know, significant portion of the population like us. But then when we were trying to actually move forward on programs or policies, trying to get the support of the people in the government, 
that was a different story. Ah, uh, so governments are different than people, right? Always are. I once did a roundtable with some foreign journalists, and uh, in order to give them a little cover, I kind of framed the question of what do the people back home feel about the United States? And they said they love the United States, opportunity, freedom, things that were a very generous country, but we don't like the United States coming in and telling us what to do. So the, so the way you hear that is, we love you Americans. We just hate your policies. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. right. yeah. So, so that, makes, yeah. a, that makes a really clear distinction between the policies that are government and all the rest of it uh -huh. and the personal the interaction. And one of the jobs an ambassador has is bridging that gap. Uh -huh. And the other thing I would say about our, our jobs is that the four of us had four different jobs because the requirements mm -hmm. of the countries were different. 70% uh -huh. of my job was military, intelligence, and counterterrorism. 70% of 70%. it. 70% military, counterintelligence. Military, intelligence, intelligence, intelligence and counterterrorism. Counterterrorism. Counter 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 uh -huh. so, my, so my portfolio was very different than, than uh, uh -huh. everybody else's. Uh -huh. But w fundamentally what it comes down to is the ambassador is the human embodiment of the U.S. government. In, uh -huh. in, 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 of the in government. Location. Of the U.S. government. Yeah. Ah. So, 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 so you're pushing against so, the wall. So you have to get out as an ambassador personally and meet the people. Uh -huh. So I spent a lot of my time actually going to towns and villages in Saudi Arabia so they could actually see what the U.S. ambassador looked like and what he sounded like uh -huh. as a person, not as a policy, yep. not as an invading force in Iraq, not as you know all the other uh, negative issues that, that uh, they tend to associate with America vis-a-vis -vis Middle East policy because connecting as people is really the, the, the strongest card we have to play. Did you find the same experience in Costa Rica? You know, getting I, out amongst the I people? I traveled extensively uh -huh. um, and always had a theme to the travel. I, one of the things I did was I wanted, because President Obama believes in science and technology mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's a great way to support a developing country like Costa Rica, I made a point of visiting every one of the science and tech uh, special high schools that they had. Uh -huh. um, and it gave us uh, a public relations boost uh, because everyone knew that we visited all the science and technology. So it was a way that we could take our values mm -hmm. and put it into action and leverage you know, a very small budget, which in the end, you know, people think that the State Department and mm -hmm. our government spend a significant amount of money on foreign policy, uh -huh. and yet it is an infinitesimal <laughs> amount of money. And we have to figure out how do we leverage that? Mm -hmm. And how do we make sure that we have the impact to do, as my colleagues have talked about, build that relationship can, with the country? Can I jump in just to build on something both of you said, which is <coughs> part of the way we do that is, you know, our incredibly vibrant private sector, our incredibly vibrant NGO sector, uh, our churches, you know, some of our best ambassadors uh, yes, are yes, yes. the people to people exchanges that happen mm -hmm. and that so represent who we are mm -hmm. as a country. So, so on that point, uh, one of the things that, that I push and that every ambassador should push is at the end of the day, the business of America is business. So American uh, business yeah. is a lever that we all should be using very effectively uh, in the countries that we're in and, and the Middle East was no, no uh, different from anywhere else, in, in fact, more so. In fact, in the history of Saudi Arabia, the, the oil concessions were given to Standard Oil of California in 1932, mm. six months before there were diplomatic relations between the United <laughs> States and Saudi Arabia. So business has always led diplomacy in Saudi Arabia. But, uh, and, and, and as a banker, people were used to seeing me out talking about business and commerce and banking. So, so that, that worked effectively in terms of engaging, not having to th uh, think, well, what, you know, uh, what particular policy of the administration uh, is something that I can lever. I, I was business, they all understand business, they're all uh -huh. traders, they're all uh -huh. merchants. Uh -huh. this, was, this, was, this worked very well. But you know, uh, uh, something occurs to me that we try to solve things sometimes politically, sometimes militarily, uh, but uh, if I hear you correctly, uh, investment in another country uh, makes more friends. Huh? I, I would gather so. Ambassador? You know, even even in Europe, business is among our most important relationships. Uh -huh. And uh, let's hope that Congress passes TTIP, the Transatlantic oh, yeah. Trade and Investment Partnership, mm -hmm. um, because it's very important. And we did a lot. This both President Obama and Secretary Clinton, and now Secretary Kerry, are doing a lot with entrepreneurship, and also 
not just establish businesses, but how do you work with other countries to help promote entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. Foreign direct investment in the United States is huge. Uh, we are the third largest trading partner for Little Denmark. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, their neighbors, Sweden and Germany, I believe, are their first, uh, and we're the third. That We've gone up a couple notches since I went over there. But it is a hugely important part of diplomacy, mm. Is, mm. are the business relationships. Oh. And one of the things that embassies do is work with uh, American businesses to be sure that they have support that they need in the host yeah. countries. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I would say to my team when we would look at different programs. For information about This Is America and the World and online video for all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and the F.Y. Chang Foundation guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. ANA, Japan's largest airline with an extensive network throughout Asia. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Republic of Kazakhstan, a rich history and a future of development and growth. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.